We praise God. People are still coming in. Folks are still pouring in. Amen. And we want to make sure that we're worshiping on today. We first and foremost thank all of you for being present with us on today. We're going to go on and get started uh, as we share in this great celebration. Uh, people are still pulling up on the parking lot, so don't be confused by the numbers. Amen. People are still coming in. Turn to the someone that's close beside you and tell them good morning. Look to someone on the other side, tell them good morning. Wave at somebody this morning. Amen. Amen. We praise God. Grace, we're equally blessed to have with us on this family unity day, State Representative Steve Kinsey, who's worshiping with us. Come on, give God praise for him. We will, we will make sure that we have him to address. Some may or may not know him, but he is uh, a great servant. He is our servant, and he has been one who's been very instrumental in helping us get the grants uh, to get this community center built. So we thank God that he drove from Harrisburg. Amen. Come on, praise God for him. Amen. Praise God for everyone. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Come on, let everything that has breath Come on, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. We're going to get started with our worship, and we pray that the Holy Ghost will move in a mighty and a powerful way. Amen. Amen. Good to see Brother Marlowe this morning. Come on, give God. Come on, shout for joy. Brother Marlowe is here. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give God praise for the man. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The man with the tickling fingers over there. Amen. And Grace, I know we're going to do this. I'm just happy and peacock proud today. But let's just thank our Family Unity Day committee who has put this program together. Let's thank our executive council. Come on. Praise God for them. Don't you sit down. Come on. Praise God for them. Praise God for the work that they have done. Amen. We're going to ask that we recognize them once again. But let's have a beautiful and bountiful day. Is that all right? Can we just worship God on today? Amen. Let us move forward. Amen. Good morning, Grace family. What a beautiful day it is out today. As we come together this morning, we do so unified. And what does the t-shirt say? For one purpose, one mind, one heart. So as we gather today, we do so with that in mind. Our call to worship for those that are here, that it's on your program. Today we recognize and celebrate the gift of love through family and friends. One in you, Christ, as you have called us together in unity. Lord, your life and love shown on Calvary's cross is an ideal model for us all. Take us to forgive, be patient as you are patient with us, and to serve in humility and love. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And God, as we come together today, Lord, we just know, Lord, that the doors of this church are open for all to come today, Lord. We know, Lord, that we come back with the mindset, Lord, that we want to do your work, that we want to be about Jesus, that we want to continue to serve one another, God. So we thank you, Lord, that those that have arrived and those that are on their way. You will bless us today, God, in song, prayer, and worship, and preaching, God. 
So Lord, we ask that you continue to fill these seats, that you continue to fill our hearts, and that you continue to be with us, Lord. So on this day, Lord, we just present it all back to you. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We'll ask one of our diaconates to come and give us our intercessory prayer. Then we will, amen. To our ushers, if you could just let, let our people come in, let them come on in. Just let them come in. Amen? Amen. They don't have to stand outside. Just let them come on in. Everybody say, come in. Amen. amen. All right. Good morning, church. Let us humble our hearts, bow our heads, and look to the Lord in a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We love you and we adore you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here today on this Family Unity Day, Lord. Behold how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We are many members of one body, and that's the body of Christ. Not one member is no more important than the other, Lord. We all are very important, from the youngest to the oldest, from the newest to the oldest, to the visitors, to the friends, to the community. We are all part of one body in Christ, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for us dwelling together in unity, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Grace Baptist Church of Germantown, where we in the heart of the community ever seeking to win the community's heart. So, Lord, bless us, Lord, as we, we dwell together. We ask you, Lord, to allow your Holy Spirit to move 
in us, Lord, and have your being, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to allow your Holy Spirit to help us to draw someone to you who do not know you for the pardon of their sins. Lord, we know when Adam and Eve first disobeyed you, that's when the spiritual warfare began. So each and every day when we wake up and put our foot on the floor, we're dealing with spiritual warfare, Lord. So we ask, Lord, to help us to be led by your Holy Spirit because we are all born with the spirit of good and evil, Lord. And we have a choice to do good over evil, Lord. In this world that we're living in today, in the generation of this time, there's so much evil. And there's so many people that are being led by the evil spirit, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless this generation that we're in, Lord. Help us to come back to you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Keep us, Lord, by your power divine. We thank you for everyone that's here today and this family unity day, Lord. Allow your will to be done. Bless the speaker of the hour, Lord. Bless the musicians. Bless the brother on the base, Brother Marlo Marshall, to be here with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor, glory, and praise. You are holy. You are merciful, Lord. You are mighty, Lord. And we thank you this day. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, amen. Hallelujah, God. Before we proceed with the program as it is our worship service as it is written, I'm going to digress and I'm going to go back and I'm going to lift the offering at this point in time. And this is our chance to give back unto God who has blessed us, who has kept us, that continues to keep us and continues to help us to prosper and to do what we need to do. This is the time to uplift and to show God our appreciation that we, that, that we have put our trust in him, that we have put our all in him, and that we, are, and that we know that he will bring us through. He's going he's to help us pay those gas prices. He's going to help us do those home repairs. He's going to help us pay off those student loans. He's going to help us to pay those mortgages. He's going to help us through it all, through it all. So on today, we do lift our offering. And there's many ways that you can give at this point in time. There are boxes that are stationed at the rear of the church and at the front of the church. And you may place your envelopes in as such. Or you can give online by going to the Grace Baptist Church of Germantown.org website and you can give online. Or you could just drop it under the trustees door downstairs and they will be happy to do as such. So at this time we do lift that offering and we praise God for your giving today. Now we'll bless it. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the gifts, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have provided for us and that we can give back unto you. Lord, may it be multiplied, 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 Lord, so that the ministries of this church can continue to do what we have been called to do, God. So on this day, Lord, we just ask and pray that you bless our offering, Lord, as we give unto you. Amen. Okay, we will have now have the congregational song, Lift Him Up. And you can see the words printed on your worship service this morning. If you can, can you please stand this morning as we sing together.
and we will now have our responsive reading, Christian Unity 592, and it will be led by Miss Jada Buck and Master James Buck III. Christian Unity, Psalm 133, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 20, and verses 20 to 27. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together and in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard even Aaron's beard that went down into the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Psalm 133. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, our own body, so also is Christ. <laughs> For by one spirit, all we all baptize into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? <coughs> but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now they are, wait, but now are they many members, yet but one body. First Corinthians 12, 12 to 20. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. 1 Corinthians 12, 25 through 27, amen. Amen. Good morning, Grace family. What a mighty God we serve. Amen? Amen. 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 We are the Wilson family. Dawn. And JR. And we have been chosen to give the welcome today, this morning. Before we get started, are there any visitors with us? If there are, please stand. We would like to recognize you this morning and welcome to it. First to our visitors, we are so glad that you are in our midst. We don't take this lightly that you chose to share your time with us and we pray you will have a joyous time during the service. Please feel free to join us downstairs in the social hall 
to fellowship and enjoy a light repast. You can be seated. Now to our Grace family. We welcome you to another Family Unity Day where this year's theme is celebrating families, one mind, one purpose, one heart. I say to you all how good and how pleasant it is to dwell together in unity. We greet you all with Christian love and pray you have a wonderful time in the Lord. Let the Spirit move you and take advantage as we take advantage of another opportunity to reconnect Praise God and praise God for all his blessings. Now you've been welcomed. Stay safe and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, for that warm, warm greeting. At this time, we will have recognition of our new octogenarians from Mrs. Selena Gillespie. Good morning, Grace and friends. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Family Unity Day, and in 2010, the Women's Guild recognized all the octogenarians, nonagenarians. At that time, we didn't have a centurion, but we do have one man standing, and that's our Emeritus Barry, would you please stand up? He is 100 years young. Okay. We have not been able to have our annual luncheon, but we will do it on next year, 2023. So don't you go anywhere. You have to be here for that. Okay, we are going to um, recognize our new members at this time. May I have the envelope, please? Okay, our first new inductee is Catherine Braxton. Is she here today? Second, Mrs. Patricia Beach. Is she here today? Ms. Constance Bull, Carolyn Gardner, Deacon Emeritus James Jones, Myrna Pinkett, Dolores Stovall, Mrs. Lydia Thomas, Ms. May Williams. If you're here, you can stand. <laughs> Mrs. Barbara Richardson. Richards, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Ellen Williams. Mrs. Grace McCollum. <laughs> I'm sorry, she has a title. Emeritus uh, Deaconess, Grace McCollum. Mrs. Lorraine Gaines and Mrs. Elaine Turner. Very good. Okay. Well, the per persons who are here, would you please come forward so that we can present you to the pastor? And we have a certificate that's Elaine. That's Elaine. Elaine. This is Richardson. Richardson. I'm sorry. Um.
Give them one of you. Yeah, give it to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and who's the gentleman that we have? Oh, you just came with her. Okay. On behalf of our pastor, our esteemed pastor, Pastor James Henry Buck, the <laughs> junior, <laughs> we are happy to induct all of these fine gentlemen and ladies into the Grace Baptist Church Hall of Fame for matriots and patriots. After this event, we would like for you to stay in your seats. Oh, all of our other oxygenarians and centurions and non-denarians, please stand up. Please stand up. Okay. After the service, we will be taking a picture. Uh, Deacon Massey had a, has agreed to do that. So remain in your seats after the service so that we can direct that for you. Also, we have a little bag of love gifts from the Women's Guild to all of you, the ones who are standing and the ones who are up here. <laughs> so please come downstairs after your picture in room six and that you will be directed as to how to get it. If there's somebody here who can represent and take to some of our people who are not here, we would like for you to come to room six and do that for us. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. And dance usually doesn't include talking, but we're going to talk this morning. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Today's Family Unity Day, yes? yes? Unity is about togetherness. It's about being one. This particular dance was one of the first that our Praise Dance Ministry learned almost 20 years ago. If you've been a member of Grace Baptist Church before today, you've seen this dance a good four, five, six times. You've seen it at funerals. You've seen it at uh, special events. I bet you know this dance by this point. I bet you know it. I bet you know when the here it comes, here it comes is coming. So then in the spirit of Family Unity Day, let's minister together, family. Let's minister together. So you'll notice I don't have my garb on today because I'm going to be with you in the aisle with my mask on. <laughs> but I believe that praise dance is not something you watch. It's something you do. You don't have to go to rehearsal to praise dance. You don't have to have special clothes to praise dance. You don't even have to be able to walk to praise dance. If you have anything that you can move, you can worship our Lord. So this dance that many of us have seen a million times, there's a couple of parts in here I think we can do. And with the little bit of distancing we've got in the aisle, I mean in the uh, pews, you got space for your arms to move. All right? The song says, Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down. It says it again, rain down. It says comforter and friend. I need your help again. Holy Spirit, and repeats it, rain down, rain down. 
Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change and both hands. Change our hearts as we stand in your invisible Bible on your word. Holy Spirit with the power in your fingers. Rain down. Okay? It does that three times in the song. I'm going to stand in the aisle. I'm going to face the dancers so you have an example to follow. And then when I watch the video, I expect that you will dancing with me. <laughs> Amen? The parts that we did, didn't talk about, the dancers will illustrate, and you're welcome to observe those. But when it's time for that chorus, my expectation is that you will be dancing with us. Amen? Amen. All right, now. I'm going to be watching the video. We're going to find y'all. <laughs> we were recruiting men's ministry last week. We were recruiting praise dance this week. All right? Uh, music, AV team, when you're ready, thank you so much.
Holy Spirit, rain down. Oh, oh my gosh. Holy Spirit, rain down. We'll now have the scripture lesson by Miss Angela Massey. morning. Our scripture reading is coming from the New Living Translation. It is 1 Samuel chapter 19 verses 1 through 7 and it reads, Saul now urged his servants and his son Jonathan to assassinate David. But Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, told him what his father was planning. Tomorrow morning, he warned him, you must find a hiding place out in the fields. I'll ask my father to go out there with me and I'll talk to him about you. Then I'll tell you everything I can find out. The next morning, Jonathan spoke with his father about David, saying many good things about him. The king must not sin against his servant David, Jonathan said. He's never done anything to harm you. He has always helped you in any way he could. Have you forgotten about the time he risked his life to kill the Philistine giant and how the Lord brought a great victory to all Israel as a result? You were certainly happy about it then. Why should you murder an innocent man like David? There is no reason for it at all. So Saul listened to Jonathan and vowed, as surely as the Lord lives, David will not be killed. Afterward, Jonathan called David and told him what had happened. Then he brought David to Saul, and David served in the court as before. The word of God 
for the people of God. Let us be blessed real good. Do we have a spiritual treat for you? In keeping with today's theme, Pastor Buck picked the perfect speaker in Reverend Reginald W. Johnson II, the senior pastor of Holy Nation Baptist Church, located in the heart of North Philadelphia at 1415 North Broad Street. He's a perfect fit for our theme, celebrating families, one mind, one purpose, one heart. Just like many of us worshiping this morning, Reverend Jay's mind has been set on what saith the Lord since he was a teenager at Drexel U, where he served as the intercessory prayer leader for Disciples in Need Campus Ministry. Reverend Johnson was called to the office of deacon at age 20, licensed to preach at 23, and appointed to the Board of Elders at 24. At the age of 29, this child of God was called to the pastorate, a man whose mind has stayed on Jesus. One of Reverend Johnson's purposes has been that of an anointed preacher, teacher, lecturer, and a trusted advisor who has been recognized around the world as a creative thinking leader who continually bridges the gap between church and society. One of Pastor Johnson's greatest joys has been equipping the global church to do more ministry effectively in the 21st century. I am sure that means he'll waste no time this morning helping us to get our amen and our shout on. One heart? Why, of course, Reverend Johnson's heart belongs to our Lord and Savior, his best friend, ministry partner, and beautiful wife, Ursula Johnson, in addition to his congregation and church community. Grace, we're in for a spiritual celebration by way of Reverend Reginald W., which stands for Well-Favored Johnson II. One mind, one purpose, one heart. And now, Reverend Johnson, as I take my seat, let me introduce you to the finest Christian congregation in all of Philadelphia. I am more than sure that you will enjoy your time in the pulpit this morning. Amen. Let the church say amen. 
Come on, let the church say amen again. If you really love Jesus, put those hands together and give him a hand clap of praise. What an honor and what a privilege it is to be here at the Grace Baptist Church. Can you celebrate yourself on this Family Unity Day? Amen. For all of the wonderful things that the Lord is doing in the life of your church, we are giving God praise and glory and honor. And certainly I am grateful for this opportunity and bring you greetings from Holy Nation Baptist Church in Philadelphia, 2925 Ridge Avenue. Also, I want to thank God for my friend and for my brother, the pastor of this fine church, Pastor Buck. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for this servant leader. And to all of the saints, members, and friends, and leaders in your respective places, we honor and give God praise for you. There is a word from the Lord, and I know the word has already gone forth, but if you'll allow me to read the scripture again for emphasis, I would be appreciative. 1 Samuel chapter number 19, verse number 1 through verse number 7 Again, 1 Samuel chapter number 19, verse number 1 through verse number 7. And here is the reading of God's word. Saul now urged his servants and his son Jonathan to assassinate David. But Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, told David what his father was planning. Jonathan warned David, tomorrow morning you must find a hiding place out in the fields, and I'll ask my father Saul to go out there with me, and I'll talk to him about you, David, and then I'll tell you everything I can find out. And the next morning, Jonathan spoke with his father Saul about David saying many good things about David. Jonathan said, the king must not sin against his servant David. He's never done anything to harm you. David has always helped you in any way he could. Have you forgotten about the time that David risked David's life to kill the Philistine giant and how the Lord brought a great victory to all of Israel as a result? You were certainly happy about it then. Why should you murder an innocent man like David? There is no reason for it at all. So Saul listened to Jonathan and vowed, as surely as the Lord lives, David will not be killed. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for another chance to be in your presence. We thank you that in your presence is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, we didn't come for form or for fashion, but we came because we need a right now word for a right now people who are facing a right now situation. And so, God, I thank you for clarity of thought, articulation of speech, and for bringing wisdom to my humble words. I pray, God, that you save somebody, that you heal someone, and that you will deliver. And, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and, yes, all of the praise. And everybody that loved Jesus said amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, for a couple of moments, as the Spirit of the Lord shall lead, guide, and direct, I'd like to tag our time together this morning with the thought or the theme that's what friends are for. Would you look at the neighbor on your left or on your right and just repeat after me? Just say, that's what friends are for. That's what friends are for. Uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, I am convinced that there is a blessing in getting older. I, I am convinced that there is a blessing in getting older because the older you get, the more perspective you get. You realize as you get older that there are certain people that God puts into your life for a reason. 
Then there are some people that God puts into your life for a season, but it's all a part of God's strategic plan to make sure that you've got everything that you need so that you can accomplish the great plan and destiny that God has for your life. I wanted to make sure that I helped us to understand exactly what a friend is. So I sent a text message to my beloved friend Webster, and he told me to tell you that a friend, let the church say friend, friend is a person who knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection. A friend is one who is there with you in good times and yes, in bad times. And you know by now that your friends are your greatest supporters. Friends are those who should be on your side, and they are those who want what is in your best interest. They are those who are loyal, and yes, those who are generous and trustworthy and reliable, and did I mention they're also dependable. And I want to suggest to somebody under the sound of my voice that after 25 or 26 months of being in isolation and socially distant, of not being able to see people face to face, it sure is good to have some friends like you. It's good to have people who you can call when you need them. It's good to have people who you can reach out to. And even when you can't see them in person, you can FaceTime them. You can WebEx them. You can Zoom them. You can Facebook Live them. You can YouTube them. But thanks be unto God, even now we can see you live and in living color. Jonathan was David's close friend. And when we meet David, we meet David connected to Jonathan. David meets Jonathan because of Saul, David's employer. And the Bible lets us know that Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and David loved Jonathan, and Jonathan loved David as himself. David, the eighth son of Jesse, had been tending sheep when I, we approach him in the text. And when along came the prophet Samuel on assignment from God to anoint the next king. Why? Because Saul disobeyed God. And so God raised up David as Saul's successor. David, that small, brown, and ruddy young man, was the only one of Jesse's sons that the oil would flow for. And somebody under the sound of my voice needs to understand that you can't understand 1 Samuel chapter 19 until you scroll back to 1 Samuel chapter 16. For it is in 1 Samuel chapter number 16 that we see that Samuel took the horn of the oil of God and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel anoints David as king in his father's dining room. The priest and prophet agrees with the decision of God. The priest and prophet comes in alignment with the provider who is God and the oil flows and David is anointed king. He, he's anointed king and has no staff. He, he's anointed king and has no kingdom. He's anointed king and has no victory. He's anointed king and has no experience. He's anointed king and has no power. Alice and I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came to talk to somebody under the sound of my voice uh, to tell you that you might not have the territory, but thank God you got the title. You may not have the palace, uh, but thank God you got the power. Uh, and every now and then God uh, will give you a glimpse of what he's going to do in your life. I wonder, is there anybody who can thank God for the holy glimpses he gives every now and then he's king but somebody else is on the throne he's king but somebody else is sitting in the seat he's king but they're following somebody else's orders 
And the older you get, you begin to realize that patience is your friend. Because if you stand still and let the Lord fight your battle sooner or later, God will do what only God can do. Everybody loves David. David is that one character in biblical antiquity, Dr. Buck, that folk absolutely love. And yes, even though David isn't perfect like many of you, David is one who is a man after God's own heart. Even Bono, that famous YouTube singer, YouTube singer dubbed Davis, uh, David the Elvis of the Bible. Why is David so popular? Why is David so famous? How is it that David authored more than 73 psalms and filled the pages of more than two of the 66 books in the Protestant Bible? I'll tell you why. Because David had a secret weapon. And David's secret weapon was Jonathan, his friend. Jonathan was David's friend, and Jonathan loved David as himself. I love how Dr. Leonard Sweet, professor emeritus and theologian from Drew University, describes Jonathan. He says, Jonathan is more than an acquaintance or a companion, but Jonathan is a true friend. Let the church say true friend. And when Dr. Sweet translates Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 24, he says, Some friends play at friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one nearest kin. And that's exactly what Jonathan does for David. Here we are now in our text, and it's only Jonathan and David. There, there is no Iliab, there is no Abinadab, there is no Shimei, there is no Nathaniel or Radai or Elozim, his sisters Zeruah or Abigail, and not even his father Jesse are there. The only person who's standing with David at this point is Jonathan. Why is Jonathan there? Because Saul, David's employer, is looking to kill David. There's somebody out there who can agree with me that the best time to be my friend is not when things are going well, but the best time to be my friend is when all hell is breaking loose. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice who can take 30 seconds and give God praise? Because every now and then God will send a Jonathan your way. I love Susan Sontag, that American author, because she says that we all carry two passports, one for the land of well and one for the land of ill. And if your friends can only travel with you when things are well, then they've missed out on half of the relationship that comes with being a part of who you are. David would not have got to where he was going. That's what I want to argue. If it had not been for his friend, Jonathan. Saul was jealous because David's gift made room for him. Everything he put his hand to was wonderfully successful. And people start talking about David's success more than they started talking about Saul's success. Listen at what they said. Saul has slain thousands, but David has slain tens of thousands. And the very thing that helps David also hurts David because Saul gets jealous. And the Bible says uh, Saul told his son Jonathan and all his attendants to kill David. Saul told his son Jonathan and all his attendants to kill David. Did y'all hear that? Let me rewind it and say it again.
again. Saul told his son Jonathan and all his attendants to kill David. And I just came on this family unity day to remind every one of you that every now and then you need to get a Jonathan in your life. You need somebody who can be an advocate for you. That's what Jonathan is to David. He's an advocate. How does David escape the plot, the strategy, and the plan that he cannot see? God uses David's friend named Jonathan. And I came all the way from North Philadelphia to Mount Area to tell somebody that's what friends are for. Would you just pass that down your row real, real quick? Just say, that's what friends... That's what friends are for. You, you, you need, you need, uh, you need, uh, you need some friends in your life uh, who can be an advocate. That's what friends are for. You need friends in your life that your enemies can't confide in. I said you need some friends in your life that your enemies can't confide in. And somebody under the sound of my voice understands that you can't tell me something about my friend in confidence because whenever you tell me, it becomes public matter. I've discovered, Pastor Buck, that I've got to have friends in my life who are like AT&T who make disclaimers that when you call them up in the midnight hour, they say like AT&T, this call may be monitored for quality assurance. And anything you use can and will be used against you so that my friend, I wish I had some people who knew loyal friends. Jonathan is an advocate. Let the church say advocate. Jonathan warned David, my father is looking for a chance to kill you. And Jonathan, just like many of the good friends that we have, are like side view mirrors. They expose our blind spots. They help us to see stuff that we couldn't see on our own. They keep us safe from accidents that could happen if those mirrors weren't there. What I'm trying to tell you, Grace, is that we all need a Jonathan in our life. We all need a Jonathan who's not only an advocate, but can I show you something else? We all need a Jonathan who's a protector. Not only is Jonathan David's advocate, but Jonathan is also David's protector. Let the church say protector. Y'all still reading your word? Because your Bible says that Jonathan told David, my father is looking for you. Tomorrow morning, Jonathan says, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go out into the field and find a safe place. You're going into the field and you're going to find a hiding place. And I don't know about you, but I'm hallelujah happy. And thank you, Jesus, glad for friends who can hold me down and make sure that I am in a safe place. As a matter of fact, the only reason some of you came to Family Unity Day is because you got an invitation from your Jonathan. Because your Jonathan knew that it wasn't safe out in these streets. Your Jonathan knew that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Your Jonathan knew that there's a real enemy out there going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour as a roaring lion. Your Jonathan understood that when you clean your house real good one day, that if you don't replace it with God-centered things, that the enemy of your soul comes back seven times stronger. And what your Jonathan came to tell you is find yourself a hiding place. And I don't know about you, but I thank God because grace is a strong hiding place. Grace is a safe place. And every time you come into God's house, you're safe from attack, safe from the plans and the enemy has already set up for your life. 
Thank God for those friends who not, on, not only are advocates, who are not only protectors, but thank God for those friends who are also courageous. Jonathan is David's advocate. Jonathan is David's protector. But wait a minute. Jonathan is also courageous because the Bible lets us know that Jonathan goes to his father, Saul, and says, do you remember? Do you remember that it was David who defeated Goliath? Do you remember that it was David who played the harp so masterfully that they soothed the tormenting spirits off of you in the midnight hour? Do you remember that it was David who won great victory for all of Israel? Do you remember that it was not by chance or by coincidence, but God used David so that you could get to where you are? And I I don't know about you, child of God, but every now and then you got to thank God for your friends who are courageous. Who is it that challenged Saul not to do evil by killing an innocent man named David? Who is it that reminds Saul that it, if it wasn't David, there would have never been any victory in Israel? I'll tell you who. It's Jonathan, this courageous brother who's a part of the royal family who refused refuse to let his friend be another statistic. I'm already done. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God cause his face to shine upon you. But I just came to Grace Baptist Church in Mount Area to celebrate all of the Jonathans. I just came to Grace Baptist Church to celebrate the Jonathans that are courageous enough to face their friends' adversaries. And somebody is still looking at me cross-eyed because you said reverend for the life of me I've gone all through my phone and I don't see a Jonathan in there I've gone through and I've tried to look for the person who fits the description but I came to tell somebody under the sound of my voice that even if you don't know this Jonathan there's another J I want to introduce you to this J doesn't start with James this J isn't Jesse or Justin it isn't Joseph or Jeremy or any one of those but this Jay's name is Jesus do y'all mind if I talk about Jesus he's Mary's baby he's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world he's the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley the bright and the morning star he's the great I am and I heard John say no greater love than a man lay down his life for a friend like you and for I, as we're standing all over the sanctuary, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. God bless you, Grace Baptist Church. God bless you. Someone today may need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you're not 100% certain that if you were to die right now, that you'd live with God forever. Sir, ma'am, let me introduce you to the greatest friend there is. Jonathan was just the prototype for Jesus. Because Jesus is the greatest advocate. Jesus is the greatest protector. Jesus is the most courageous friend that you'll ever meet. He walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. If you don't know Jesus, make him your choice. Maybe you already know Jesus, but you don't have a church home. Let me tell you, Grace Baptist Church is, the, is a wonderful church. It's a God-fearing church. It's a church that loves Jesus and loves the people of God. If you don't know Jesus, wherever you are, every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Make Jesus your choice. 
Maybe you already know Jesus, but you don't have a church home. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. You take the first step and watch God take the next step. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, I'll give you rest. As the invitation is still being extended, you can raise your hand. We will come to you. There may be a fear or hesitation of walking alone. But this invitation is extended unto you. Come, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. You may say, well, Pastor, we have already been baptized. Fine. But you may be in a broken relationship and not in fellowship. And so we invite you, raise your hand. If you're not attached to a body, the hand can't live by itself. The foot can't walk alone. The arm can't reach by itself. All of the parts of the body play an important role. Will you come? Let not this moment pass you by. As the pastor has just echoed this morning, we all need a friend in times like these. But there's a friend who stick it closer. That is Jesus. Will you come? Raise your hand. We can come to you. If you have not confessed Christ, you're not a part of a body. Let me say this as well because there was a conversation we had with a person at the Pew Charitable Trust Foundation. And in that conversation, he was sharing with many pastors that over the past two to three years, a lot of folks have walked away from church, have left church. And he extended the invitation. One of the things that can statistically help restore what's happening in Philadelphia is to reconnect people to the authenticity of their faith and their existence. He said, that comes through the church. And so as the pastor has just said, the church has a purpose. Will you come? My brother, my sister, will you come? Will you come? Raise your hand. We will come to you. We will come to you. Come on, let us sing that. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. Our soul says yes. Come on, Sister Marilyn. Y'all play that for me. Come on, Grace. We sing that all the time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing that. From the bottom to the depths, yes, Lord, completely yes, our soul, amen. Come on, give God a clap of praise. Thank God for our pastor this morning. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for Pastor Reginald Johnson and the Holy Nation Baptist Church. Come on, lift praises unto our Lord and Savior for the word and the work that God has shared on today. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. We thank God for all of you coming in. Brother Rudy, do I see you back there? Brother Rudy, that's you? Amen. Praise God. Good to see you, Brother Rudy. Amen. Amen. The general himself. It's good to see everybody. Look around. See, I told you that the seating wasn't done when you first came in. Look around and see how God has blessed and brought people in on today. Amen. Look at the number of families who are here on today. Give God praise. Let the Holy Ghost have its moment. Amen. Amen. Be before we leave, Grace, before we leave, I uh, most definitely want to say, Madam President, is there anyone from the Family Unity Day Committee who would like to have a word before we leave? And look at these T-shirts that we got. Y'all, who, who wants a T-shirt? You got to buy it now. <laughs> you got to buy it. You got to buy it. Amen. Amen. All right, they'll turn it on. Testing. All right. All right. It is a pretty picture from this angle. Amen. Uh, you know, I'm used to being a bedside Baptist <laughs> and um, watching through either my phone or through the computer. But uh, I identify people's head by ba the backs of their heads as I look on. And I always see um, Sister Betty Conyers. And, uh, but it's good to see her in the face this time. Amen. But uh, I thank you so much for coming. And I, I want to acknowledge the people that uh, put this together. We would meet every Tuesday uh, at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, I think we started meeting at the end of March. No, no, can't be right. Yeah, I guess it was maybe mid-March. And I can only say that um, we are so pleased at uh, Deb Croston. You know, you know what you usually do, forget. Stand up, Sister but, Deb. But I got to go by the way I see him on Zoom. <coughs> Amen. Deb Croston, uh, Maxine Tucker, um, Scott Fields. Occasionally, we would have uh, Carolyn Wimbush. Um, when we talk about the t-shirt, she'd be there. Um, is Kalina here today? Kalina is the young lady that gave us the uh, inspiration for the t-shirt. Amen. Uh, but um, yes, Deb. Leola Highsmith, yes, yes. Uh, she was All the right. person that coordinated the entire today's service. So she deserves it. And Diane Bates as well. Let me make sure I, I give her a name. But um, thank you for um, buying the T-shirt. And I think we're going to plant this seed into the uh, homecoming uh, com committee so that uh, we may have a new uh, T-shirt in October. Deb, anything else? Oh, yes, the Watsons. The Watson gang. I must admit, the three of them... Hold your hand up, Watson gang. The, the Watson gang did a great job with the movie yesterday and the popcorn Amen. and the, the goodies that we ate and we drank. And uh, Scott Fields, I see him up top. Uh, Scott sort of kept us on the, um, on the path. And um, I must tell you, I was the timekeeper because we would meet from 7 to 8 and my, my show on, on Tuesday nights is FBI. And as we <laughs> inch closer and closer, and I think the latest that we went may have been about 8.12 or 8.15. Oh, Lord. So I had to see my show. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for just fulfilling this idea. And, um, again, we want to do the shirts again in different shirt in October. But thanks so much for coming. Amen. Come on, praise God for our committee once again. Amen. Every, every, what, some, something, uh, what Scott just walked out, I got to say, a lot of people know Scott because when we're on our Bible study, on our Zoom call, um, we always make reference to Scott. If anything goes wrong, we're like, Scott did it. And so people are texting me, what Scott had? So everybody want to see Scott. And so Scott has a name out there, a positive name. So we praise God for him. Grace, let me do this. Um, before we leave, we, we're grateful to have with us uh, State Representative Kinsey, who heard about our Family Unity Day. Many of you know that his office is only a few blocks down, and so he thought it not robbery to come and fellowship with us on today. State Representative, will you come? Just come and address the congregation. Let them see who you are at least. So come on. Amen. Come on, give God praise for State Representative Kinsey. Come on, man. Get up here. 
Amen. 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 Good afternoon, family. It's, it's an honor for me to be here today on Family Unity Day. And, and as I sat in the pew, I reflected. Um, I grew up four blocks down the street on Sherman Street. And I remember when Grace Baptist Church was being built. And my father, God rest his soul, was a deacon at Second Macedonia Church. And my father, we called him the general. So if we weren't on time to get my father's car to drive to church at Second Macedonia, then we walked up here to Grace Baptist Church. And as I talk about Family Unity Day, 10 years ago, right here at this church, we eulogized my younger sister who died from cancer. And so as Pastor Buck is talking about the community center, I'm, I'm proud to be able to say, as a state legislator, I wanna support the initiative, I wanna support the vision that this church family have. Um, this is family for me, y'all. This is family for me, and, 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 you know, and I'm just grateful to be able to partner with the church. You know, we had the Tuskegee Airmen here uh, some time ago. We recently had the police commissioner and all of the police force right here um, just a few months ago talking about the issues that are taking place in, in our community. But this is what family is about, y'all. This is what friends are for. This is what church and community is about, all of us being able to come together to talk about the issues and the concerns that are impacting our community. So I just want to say thank you, Pastor Buck, and, you know, and Pastor Johnson, I want to say thank you for the message, man, you know, because, you know, friends and family, for me, that's interconnected. And, and I look at my friends as family as well. And just to hear, to come here today and hear that message and be here with you, I just want to say thank you very much for allowing me to be here. So thank you again. Amen. Who is that preacher back there talking? Who is the preacher back there? Now, that preacher been shouting during the whole service. Amen. Grace, thank everybody so much. Families, we love all of you. Once again, anytime you feel yourself looking for a place to worship, come to God's greatest gift on this side of glory, none other than Grace Baptist Church of Germantown. Amen. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. As we prepare to go down from this place, but never from the presence of God and the presence of one another, let's remember this needing friends in times like this. We don't know what the person on our left or our right is going through. We may not understand. But it's a loving and kind thing to have a shoulder to lean on. It's a loving and kind thing to have an arm wrapped around you. It's a loving and kind thing for someone to look beyond whatever circumstances there were and seek reconciliation. That's who we are. And so with that being said, Madam President, I know that this is family unity today, but there were some over the last two years that were not able to see that day or today. So if we could just pause for a moment of silence, and then we'll have our benediction. Now unto him who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask. God, we thank you for this family unit today. Now, God, may it set us ablaze that we may connect, reconnect, not only with family here, not only with family over there, but family beyond. We thank you for those friends, God, who are advocates. We thank you for those friends, God, who are protectors. But we thank you, God, for that friend who sticks closer than a brother. Thank you, God, for all that we have seen. Let this inspire us to go a little further. In Jesus' name we pray. And we count these things done by faith. And all of God's people concluded with a threefold amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them I love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Go in peace, family.